What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What qualities matter in the digital age when you're starting from scratch? The hustler, in context of a mentality, is the core root of this question. As we knew him growing up, the hustler was simply somebody that could just go outside with nothing and come back with something, be it money, connections, opportunities, more than he left with. Being a hustler can take on many different meanings depending on what we're talking about, but no matter the context, the hustler's rare. On the grander scale, in its most purest form, the hustler's an ambitious entrepreneur, a self-starter who knows he's gonna have to go harder than everybody out there to get what he wants, because his goals are that big. He knows it's gonna take endurance. He expects that. Other people think his goals are impossible. In the mind of the hustler, he's willing to sacrifice a normal life and the comfortabilities associated with that for the chance to have an amazing life. He prefers one in a million odds because that's what he expects out of himself. The hustler, because of their ability and or their ambition to go get what they want. We respect them for their ability to bounce back in the face of adversity and keep pushing. We respect their ability to keep leveling up over time. The hustler signs up for an unorthodox life that requires dedication, self-motivation, and the willingness to adapt to the world around them. The hustler is confident, persistent, in your face. He's hands-on, planning, building, moving, connecting, anything, anything to get toward the final goal, whatever it may be. The hustler stands out because they're willing to put in the footwork that no one else is or even think to do. Now that was and is still the mindset of many immigrants coming to this country. Get ahead with hard work by any means necessary. Now Thomas and I and everybody born in the late 80s and early 90s are part of the last generation to have our childhood not be affected by the internet. And we're also lucky enough to be a part of the first generation of people that are living our passions and making our careers through the digital media and the internet. Nobody had to tell pre-internet kids to go out and hustle. It was just inherently in us. We just knew it. The internet changed the hustler. Being a father of three, I can definitely attest to this. We can barely get him to go outside. It's not so inherently built in like it was for our grandparents that were immigrants and their parents and their grandparents. The qualities of the hustler remain the same to be successful today, but the analog skills have gone digital. So my grandma and grandpa are some of the hardest working people I have ever met in my entire life. When I was six years old, my grandpa Greg told me a story that I will never forget. He grew up in the jungle slash streets of Mexico. When he was four years old, he told me his mom kicked him out of the house. She couldn't afford it. She had too many kids. He's on his own. His hustle started early. He told me how he would survive. He would go around town killing snakes sell to a man in town that would make boots, wallets, and hats out of it. Now, if that's not the epitome of coming outside and getting nothing and coming back with something, I have no idea what is. All I asked my grandpa for was some candy and he dropped that bomb of a story on me, by the way. I didn't ask. But years later, as a young man, my grandpa became one of the first Mexican citizens in America with a legal work visa. His work ethic and mentality took him from a place of hopelessness to a place of endless opportunity. Now, my parents grew up in a completely different jungle. This jungle was here in America, but we were filled with gangs, drugs, and generational depression. Welcome to Merced, California. <laughs> yes. My parents had my sister and I where we were, they were still in high school. So growing up, we were poor, really poor by American standards. But my mom and my dad showed me firsthand what hard work was, especially my mom. She raised us on her own, single mother, trying to go to college, working multiple jobs. It inspired me, it molded me, and it shaped me to who I am. It screamed out at me, never give up even when you have nothing. So I knew I needed my own hustle if I was gonna do anything with my life. I was just tired of being the kid on school trips that had no money to buy anything, no money to buy food, I was just done. So in high school, I decided to start my own business. So from ages 14 to 22, I sold weed in my entire town. And let me tell you, that business took off fast. Oh, oh. But what I can't tell you is how many nerve-wracking, nail-biting trips I've taken on the I-5, 100 pounds in my trunk, 10 and two on the steering wheel, just scanning for highway patrol, praying that I make it back home. Or if not, I was at home, praying that my door did not get kicked in by task force. A constant state of paranoia. And for what? For a couple thousand dollars? At the time, it was all worth it. For a kid that grew up wanting something and expecting nothing, 
those few stacks in my pocket, that was the security, me feeling security for the very first time in my life. But after years of just going through the motions, sell this, sell that, I was introduced to a wonderful thing called Instagram. And it was there that I found something I'll forever be grateful for, and that was the online cannabis community. Until that time, I used my phone to make sales. I do not play on the internet. I'm not posting pictures. But there I found my calling. Making funny pictures and videos, making people laugh, making people smile, and it involves weed, you count me in. But after a while, guys, my following got so massive, I had to make a really hard decision. I had to change my hustle. I had to evolve. I knew I wouldn't get lucky forever on the road making those trips. I knew one day I'm gonna get popped. So what I decided to do was stop the easy money that I've been so accustomed to, and I bet on myself in this uncertain and uncharted world of content creation. So there, me and my girlfriend Rosie went broke. No more easy money coming in, but the bills keep coming in. And we noticed right away that we're fighting an uphill battle with censorship from YouTube and other platforms. YouTube top creators generate hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue every single year. Although I'm one of the more watched creators on the channel, I do not get money. I don't get monetization. And that's just due to the explicit nature of what I do. I do unreal challenges, high production, weed reviews, in-depth dives into the world of cannabis. Despite being in the red for years on end, for production costs, for editing and filming, I knew I was still gonna pump this content out because one, I love it, and two, I knew there was a real long-term value in building an authentic, dedicated following. A following somewhere where somebody can come and feel safe, feel comfortable, not feel looked down upon. And I knew if I stay true to myself, I give my community actual, you know, this talking to them. I actually respond. I go the extra mile and giving content that adds value to their lives, giving them content that keeps them company when they have nobody there. Basically, being a virtual friend. Yeah. Thank you. So. So I knew in my heart that I was on the right path to fulfilling my purpose in life spread positivity and happiness. But despite all the views on all these channels, all this stuff, I still was very uncertain if I could actually make it a career. Now, I'm not sure if they put this on the actual advertisement for tonight, but you're looking here right in front of you, the highest three-point percentage shooter in NCAA D2 college basketball history right here. One shot, one make. One shot. One make, 1,000% from beyond the arc. That's how I like to put it, all right? After my freshman season of college basketball, during spring training, after I had dedicated literally every day of my life since seventh grade to basketball, there's a little voice inside of my head that kind of crept in. It said, you know you're not going to the NBA, right? You know no matter how hard you practice, it's not gonna happen. Basketball can't save you. I had saw all the seniors from the season before who had graduated and went on and their basketball careers just were over. So at 18, I went from being on the Dean's list, getting college money, scholarship to go play basketball, to dropping out of school, quitting basketball forever, and essentially living out the plot of the movie Eight Mile. <laughs> my cousin had given me my first computer. I taught myself how to record and make little promo, Photoshop graphics, and it was over. The hustle began. For the next 10 years, Day in and day out, I've dedicated all of myself to music. We're talking about eight hour trips both ways to New York City just for a little meeting with a guy, going to pick up mixtapes and coming back, spending thousands of dollars on studio time, thousands of dollars on production, when we were just flat broke. The epitome of the hustler, banking on himself for a one in a million opportunity. Yeah. It's the only way that I could see out of a mediocre life. Even at that young age, I knew I had to set in my mind what my finish line was, and I did, and it was simple. I had to be my own boss. I couldn't wake up worried about money. I had to be able to do what I want with my time. I realized early on that it benefited me to benefit other people in my space, meaning I could trade engineers for graphics for studio time. I could shoot people little music videos, and then I eventually started working with businesses. I became, from that point, I morphed into a real, real deal, freelance graphic designer going by Drastic Graphics. Yeah! From the mixtape covers and the flyers, I started to parlay into small businesses locally. And then once I figured out how to hustle online, everybody was game all across the world in every industry. I went out and took on every project I could, 
all over in all the different styles to get my experience under my belt. Now in 2013, I realized the biggest dream of my life, moving my family from Buffalo, New York, here to beautiful SoCal. It was yeah. a lifetime dream. I had a record deal going and by all accounts, I was about to finish my whole mission I had started out when I had quit college and decided to become an artist. And that's when I realized I had to start from scratch and go in a totally different direction. After a year of being out in California, I had got something that the whole time I was grinding doing music I was hoping for, which was an opportunity to put my artistic skill to use. Drastic Graphics had been my side hustle up to that point, but finally I had real opportunity, swallowed my pride, put the brakes on the music totally, and for the next 10 years, went full Drastic Graphics mode. Yeah. I paved a lane behind the scenes in the world of stand-up comedy and podcasting, and built a reputation for myself based on the principles of the hustler. I had long ago given up my nine to fives, my miserable cubicle jobs that I hated. I had leveled up to a loyal roster of clients, my own beautiful office and studio in Orange County, and an awesome team. By all accounts, again, I was feeling like I had made it. The finish line was in sight. Everything that I'd been grinding for was paying off. And that's when I realized again, I had to scale it all back and start from scratch. I had been watching Thomas's videos ever since I met him way back when I first moved to California and held this camera for him for one of his early Vine videos. I was watching him on YouTube and he mentioned he wanted to start a podcast and instantly I could look into the future and see. Yeah. So fast forward three years later, it's just me and Marty. Between our, our few YouTube channels, we've been able to amass over 2.5 billion watch time minutes. Thank you guys. Over 200 million views and less than 500 videos. Thank you guys. And more importantly, with the Dope As Usual podcast, it has allowed us to transform and transition into the mainstream, parlay our fan base into different business ventures. This is the goal of the modern hustler today. You can look at our individual stories and you can see it took nearly a decade for all these pieces to come in a line for just the right moment for something great to happen. So when you think of what is powerful, what is important to a creator online, watch time is king. It's one thing to pique someone's interest into watching your latest work. It's another thing to keeping their interest while watching your latest work and then leaving them wanting more. Massive corporations spend millions of dollars every single year on pilots, ads, commercials, shows, whatever they want, just to try to achieve what we've been able to achieve in our warehouse, having fun. How do you do this? There are two very, very valuable personality types when it comes to being an online creative. And when combined with the hustler mentality, this can be completely unstoppable. Two powerful personality types that allow you to survive when starting from scratch in the digital era. I like to consider myself digital Swiss army knife. Now what does that encompass? Video recording, video editing, photography, photo editing, brand design, graphic design, audio recording and mixing, set design and lighting, web design and SEO, social media management, targeted advertising. Traditionally, most people would specialize in any one of these things go get a degree in graphic design, go become a camera operator, have that be your career. But what I've found in digital media, it's most important to understand, is that it's one big creative muscle. For me, I specialize in graphic design. I went back and got my degree in it. I built my business in it and my whole career around it. But had I not added on all those other skills year after year that I just mentioned, I would have shorted myself and missed out on some of the best opportunities in my life. Stunted my growth as an entrepreneur, and missed out on my finish line. It's great to be a specialist, but by studying and immersing yourself in each of these different skills, year after year, one by one, after you're already up and rolling, after a while you become an asset to everyone around you. And that's how you build relationships, business, and overall leverage in this digital world. Having hustled each of these skills individually, seeking out projects, getting paid, getting referred, making money doing these different skills, developing a system to manage it. I always knew that I had something to fall back on. There's so many different niches that these skills apply to, be it a local real estate industry, auto industry, restaurants and cafes, fitness, remote, online. These skills apply to everything. So no matter what happens, you always have something to fall, to fall back on. And I can always look into these different niches and dig out different clients. Think of powerful personalities. If this is in line with you, you have to create from a place of what do you love? 
What are you good at? And how do you add value to others? This can come in many different forms. This can be something inspiring, something funny, something for just the people to take their mind off the normal pace of their lives. It can be really fun being the star of your own show, but you have to be resilient. I've been deleted off Instagram 27 times, 3.9 million followers altogether. The night I was set to hit a million subscribers on YouTube, after years of posting, no warnings, no strikes, YouTube deletes my entire channel. But in that moment, I realized I, it doesn't matter. The connection that I had made with the fans was so deep, I could have this following back like that. But in that moment, I also realized what it was like to start from scratch, how I would react. I didn't panic, I didn't freak out. I just said, I'm gonna come back even stronger. So. For years fighting against the grain, I realized I need to change my hustle. I have to generate revenue in order to keep my content going. So in 2013, I started our clothing company, Push Trees. Thank you. 2021, we started an alternative cannabinoid company called The Dopest Shop. Yeah, yeah. See you guys. Both of these companies are well-oiled machines. They run and stand on their own. They are, they're booming, all right? But that is all because of the community and the strong connection that we have with those fans. And right now I'm gonna give you three steps that I would take to solidifying the connection with your fan base. And remember, this is something you can't buy. Step one, listen to your audience. Truly care, talk to them. Commenting back is free, DMing back is free. It may take you a few minutes, but it may make that person's entire day. Just remember, always remember, you represent each other. Step two, be transparent. The worst thing you could possibly do is lose your audience's trust. Not everything's a win. You can't slam dunk every day. If you mess up, own up to it. We're all human. It takes years to build the trust of your audience and a couple seconds to lose it. Step three is something I call the 50-50 rule. 50% 50 of your, of your content should be what the fans request. What are they asking for? It could be something trendy or fun. As long as you're staying true to your style of content while trying to cater to your fans, it could be a perfect combination. And the other 50% of your content should be what you want. That's why you started doing this. That's why you have an audience. I'm weird. Other weird people found my channel and they came somewhere where they can feel normal. Thank you guys, right? When it comes down to it, staying authentic, staying true to yourself, that will ensure that you have fans for life. Thank you guys. But then once you do reach that level and you have the ability to have financial freedom for yourself and for your loved ones, once you cross that chasm, once you climb that rope to the top of the mountain, you get to the top and look around and you realize there's just another mountain with another rope. Once you reach that finish line, a whole new marathon begins with a whole new set of goals that are more in line with where you're at at that point. Even bigger and better now, because once you conquer that first mountain, you know for sure it can be done, and you can set out to do what the rest of the world thinks is impossible. Thank you. All right. So no matter what unique path you choose to go down, keep the hustler mentality alive in yourself. Don't let it get diluted down by the comfortability of your lifestyle. Don't get too soft. Push yourself out of your comfort zone. Every year, add a new skill that progresses you in your, in your field or your career, whatever it may be. Always create from a place of giving back to your community and trust that with hard work and dedication, your road and your path to success will unveil itself to you. When we started this individual journeys, podcasting wasn't even a thing yet. But we kept the passion, we kept the faith, we followed everything through, and we kept on pushing. And we encourage every single one of you guys to do the same. Thank you so much. Have a dope ass day.